experiment that is how you frame your research question which is four your week no no this is week uh, eight advantage that i have i've got more time available when you are full-time phd candidate you only can uh, have almost four years for your phd and i have almost five to six years uh, because it's financed by the government welcome back Hello everyone, welcome to week 8. This week I am going to focus on the... I mean I already explained my research in last week's so you should check last week's video to know more about my research. This week I am going to focus on a specific scenario of collaboration as per the advice given by my promoter. Last week, you can check the last week's uh, video to know more about what particular advice I got from him. So my main focus will be to design the scenario of collaboration in that particular scenario. So I need to make a scenario design. For now, we have two participating institutions where we are going to do the experiments maybe one is in my place where I did my masters with my former thesis supervisor in Tew Delft which can be in programming labs in Tew Delft in collaborative programming when people work in a group and collaborate in during programming labs in bachelor classrooms or maybe in other classrooms which is near our university that is Zoid University which is very near to Open University and that's also like a research center where people do research in the uh, K-12 classroom or with the students so how do you write a one-pager experimental design as asked by my promoter which I'm going to do this week 8 I mean I already did, is on my way to do it so experimental design basically consists of uh, the goals of your research the main objectives and a brief background of what brought you to that point about one comp I will talk only about one component of designing the experiment that is how you frame your research question which is really an essential part and is very difficult for many people people struggle with that a lot I mean in my case I remember like when I did my masters in Tew Delft when I started my thesis it was really really difficult to frame my research question in the beginning so the first thing before you frame your research question is to design or define your independent and dependent variables in your experimental setup so how do you find it so first thing is to narrow down your scope of research in my case, I'm focusing on a particular scenario of collaboration. So, you focus on a particular uh, subset of your research when you write a one-pager experimental design. And then initially you need to form the research question before you explain that one-pager with all the objectives and the goals because everything is dependent on that uh, very important piece that is the research question. So how do you find the independent independent variable is something which is not dependent on anything like for example if i want to predict the quality of collaboration then the things that come to help me to predict the quality like the gesture posture or maybe the audio data are the independent variables and uh, the quality of collaboration that we measure is the dependent variable because quality is dependent on these 
features that is the audio data and the video data gesture posture and other things uh, mostly I am not going to explain a tutorial on research question but I will give you a brief information which will be helpful a brief fast track information so your research question should not be something which just gives a yes or no response or answer to the question it should be something like which starts with how what or to what extent or I mean like uh, something like that those WH words put your independent variable so suppose it's like to what extent dot 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 the independent variable and then dot 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 the dependent variable that's the general logical structure but for more I'll leave some links in the below uh, so which will help you to take more reference of actually what is a research question so we end this week with a nice glimpse into the Durga Puja festival happy Dasera to everyone in India because the end of this week we celebrate Dasera with a Bengali community in Amstelveen in Amsterdam which is really nice because we get a lot of nice food Indian food after a long time and nice company of people friends so are you shooting the video for your week four? no no this is week uh, eight eight yeah the end of week eight friday so your house is close to this place? No, not very close. Uh, it's like uh, half an hour. But yeah, it's okay. It's in the eye of the room. Uh, now we are in the Durga Puja festival organized by the Bengali community in the end of week 8 and luckily I found the location which was really tough I had to go round and round because of some metro construction was going on so hope I will meet you in week when I return uh, I mean after the festival I return with my friends from Amstelveen to Delft so at that time I tried to make a short video of how you book tickets in Netherlands when you arrive for the first time because you don't know what happens and how you book the tickets and other things and short things, short glimpse in the traveling in Netherlands which will be attached below so here you won't see much that will be part of a separate video about life in Netherlands I'll create another playlist which will explain you how to book tickets and travel and, and other things in Netherlands last but not the least this week i made a uh, interview with one of my colleagues to give you some advice so it basically focuses on the candidates who are interested to do phd in netherlands or maybe in europe and uh, i mean they want to do it part-time so they work two days a week or three days a week so how does it affect if you do a part-time PhD what are the pros and cons and what kind of advice does he want to give to them uh, hello Nadi hello uh, welcome to this uh, interview series in week eight so Nadi is one of my colleagues in here in Open University and he's doing a PhD and uh, so the main topic of discussion today is what are the experiences of a part-time PhD candidate and what are the pros and cons of doing a part-time PhD and finally we are going to throw some light on uh, what are the uh, advice for the part-time PhD like if anyone wants to join as a part-time PhD then what advice Nadi wants to give to them? So off to Nadi. Yeah, uh, my name is Nadi Fanshams. Hello everybody. I'm uh, at the Open University uh, as an external PhD candidate. And that's really uh, something else than being a, a full-time uh, full uh, PhD candidate because uh, I have two days uh, a week for my PhD and I work uh, for three days uh, at Fontes University at Applied Sciences as a researcher and uh, a college teacher. 
So I have to do my PhD in two days a week, and that, that's a little different. Um, my PhD uh, concerns the main topic that I'm doing research uh, about how robotics and programming with young children, uh, ele elementary school children, ensures the development of computational thinking skills. And it's a really interesting topic uh, to look at uh, because programming is not uh, something that is really uh, into the curriculum of primary school, so it's, it's re uh, relative new for children and teachers of primary school. So it's really interesting and I'm gaining a lot of fun doing it and doing this research. Um, but um, as an external PhD candidate, uh, then you got some benefits, uh, so you got some pros and you got some concerns, contrasts about uh, being at Open University not full time. Uh, so the, the pros for me uh, as an external PhD candidate are it's a really a stimulating environment when you can do your PhD at a university and spe uh, sp specific uh, at the Open University. It's, it's really an exciting place to be. Uh, it's nice to work with uh, uh, interesting colleagues and um, doing uh, challenging projects and uh, gaining opportunities um, uh, which you don't have uh, normally when you're not uh, working at a university. It's, it's, really, it's really nice uh, to be in, in here. Uh, of course, you meet nice people and uh, they do interesting stuff, doing interesting research. And uh, before you know it, you can collaborate together with, uh, with your colleagues who are also PhD researchers. Um, and um, another advantage that I have, I've got more time available. When you are a full-time PhD candidate, you only can uh, have almost four years for your PhD. And I have almost five to six years uh, because it's financed by the government. And then uh, the benefit is that you have uh, some more time. But then you look at the contrast and then you know what the contrasts are because when you only have two days a week uh, then it takes a lot a lot longer in time to um, to finish your phd and it's always difficult when you have to switch from your working environment uh, your working area to your phd is always switch and uh, things are overlapping all the time because when you are doing PhD, then you get uh, questions about your work and uh, uh, different ways around also. Um, so it demands a really uh, tight planning uh, and a compressed uh, schedule uh, to, to put the PhD in two days a week. Um, it takes more effort uh, to stay on track. Uh, the distractions are there and when you can do a full-time PhD for four days a week then you're really focused I mean you only have two days a week you always have to switch uh, on that focus and uh, it's, it's really challenging to, to do it in a way but it makes a lot of fun I meet nice people uh, that's why it's nice to be in the video of Sambit and maybe we can collaborate in a re research project uh, very soon it would be very nice so uh, if you are uh, thinking about doing a PhD as an external candidate, let's go for it. You can do it. It's, it's really nice to do. It. It's really motivating and keeps me really going. So thanks. I hope uh, I explained a lot about it. Uh, uh, thank you, Nadi, for such an insightful discussion with our YouTubers. And it's such a nice thing to hear that uh, even you are doing external PhD and staying for a certain amount of time at the OU, but still we share many overlapping uh, strength and concerns, mm -hmm. which really help us to bond together and uh, develop the, uh, the collaborative power. And uh, we also do research on the same domain that is technology enhanced learning. So that makes a lot of sense and it's really exciting and so meet you guys in uh, week nine. Until then, bye. Bye bye. Nice to be in here. Thank you so much. Uh, hello everybody. Um, my name is uh, Naudi Fanshams and I work at... Uh... You can start again please because I crossed. Oh, okay. <laughs> no problem. What are the... Uh... <laughs> Just wait and... I'll cut this part and mm. I'll tell the theme again because yeah, I okay. forgot what was the theme. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs>
please please don't forget to subscribe and share